Hello again everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are once again heading out in the Just Flight F-28 Professional. The little F-28 has certainly become a firm favourite of mine. As you can see the flight is going to be another British Midland outing and whilst British Midland didn't operate the F-28 they did operate the DC-9 as well as the Fokker 70 and the Fokker 100. This livery is another excellent effort by James P. Jam and as usual I'll leave a link to the available download in the video description below. Speaking of excellent, we're also going to be checking out two superb sceneries in our flight today. We're going to be operating the jet between two Pyrig sceneries, we're currently on the ground at East Midlands, and we're going to be making a short hop over the Irish Sea towards Belfast. As far as the flight goes, it's going to be a very short hop of course, ground distance of around 230 miles, perfect for the F-28. We're expecting around 80 passengers on board the jets. We're going to be cruising our way over to Belfast at flight level 240. As you can see for yourselves, it's pretty inclement weather here out of East Midlands. The forecast in Belfast is marginally better. We're holding Dublin as the alternate, which looks good. All up, we're going to be loading 6.5 tonnes of fuel on board the aircraft. I really enjoyed this flight. I certainly hope that you do as well. As always, if you do, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. So welcome once again then to the cockpit of the Just Flight F-28 Professional. I have to say that I'm really happy to be back in the aircraft, it's a great little jet, very much looking forward to the flight. As discussed, we're currently on the ground at Pyrigues East Midlands International Airport. On stand 7, we're bound for Belfast. We boarded the aircraft not too long ago, so far we've just got the battery master on. We've fired up the APU, that's now supplying the aircraft electrically. We've also taken the air conditioning on, just trying to warm up the cabin a little bit at the moment, so Hopefully as our passengers start to board we can dry them off a little bit. It is a typically beautiful British day here on the ground in East Midlands. Anyway, continuing on with our pre-flight checks, the electrical power has been checked. Emergency exit lights are set through to armed. Both constant speed drives are guarded. The engine panel, start master is selected off, igniter is set to normal and the start selector in the neutral position. Right the bleed air supply, we've got the HP bleed set to auto. LP bleeds both selected on. As far as the air conditioning goes, the left side of the system currently selected on. And the right side of the system currently selected off. Airfoil anti-icing is selected off, same for the engine anti-icing. And same as well for the pitot and vane heating. For the windshield heating, it's about 16 degrees Celsius outside currently, so we'll take that through to the low position with the left hand side there as priority. And on the pressurization panel, cruise altitude today, flight level 240, so we'll set 250. 448, vacate right into the apron of Victor, parking stand 5. It's 250, that's going to give us a cabin altitude of around 3,500 feet. Victor, stand five. The no smoking signs and the fasten seatbelt signs can go on. We've already got the jet fully fueled up, we'll talk more about that in just a moment's time. The glare shield panel for the nav radios. Nav 2 there, we've already got 109 decimal 35 tuned up. That is the East Midlands ILS. We'll leave that on nav 2. We need the DME later on for the departure. And we're going to be tracking out towards Trent. That's 115 decimal 7. So we'll tune that up on nav 1. EC 639, taxi uniform, holding point alpha 2. There's 115 decimal 7. Both units set through to on and DME. The fuel shutoff indicators. Both of those currently showing open. And we'll carry out a GPWS test. Flight slow. Pull up. Flight slow. Pull up. And the test is complete. On the left hand side console, the central warning and caution system. Just run through a test. All of the lights displaying correctly. We'll cancel the master warning once again. The nose wheel steering switch is selected on and guarded. The alternate wheel brake handles are both selected forward. For the left hand side instrument panel, firstly just checking our way through our flight instruments. Checking about 120 there on the HSI, 120 there on the magnetic compass, 120 as well on the right. 
And for the altimeters, QNH1009, that's giving us an aerodrome elevation of 300 feet. And showing that on both primary altimeters. 300 feet is the aerodrome elevation according to the chart. So the flight instruments are checked for the speed attitude command system. Coming over to the MCP, we want heading initially on the flight directors. We'll be pitching up 10 degrees initially during the climb. As far as our course goes, we're going to be runway heading initially and then tracking 298, picking up the 340 radial inbound towards Trent. So we'll select that, the 340 radial that is on both course one and course two. So there's 340 there on the left. And same there on the right. In terms of our heading, rather than setting runway heading here, is we're only going to be climbing on heading for around 1 DME. We'll set 298 in preparation for the turn. So just slowing the heading bug around. This 300 and 298 there on the heading. And lastly, in terms of our stop height, we need to be below 6,000 feet until 4 miles from the Trent VOR. So we'll select 6,000 on the altitude selector. And we have 6,000 set. So the MCP is set, the static pressure selector is guarded, compass is set through to slave and guarded, hydraulic electric pump switches are both guarded, and we'll check the anti-skid control, firstly over there on the left, and same there on the right. For the central instrument panel, just checking our way through the engine gauges, everything looking good, showing 32 tonnes. And our current weight, that is correct, versus the load sheet. And we've got the takeoff guard there as well for 32 tonnes. The hydraulic supplies. We're looking for at least 1600 psi there for the brakes. We currently have 1600 psi. Fuel pressure lights are both illuminated, expecting to see that currently. Just checking the fuel filter ice lights. And both of those working correctly. We'll carry out an engine fire warning test. So we do have the fire bell, good indications there on the left. And same there on the right. Testing the TVIs. Indicating about 3.8 units there on both sides. The central caution light switch will leave in bright. Fuel quantities. Showing about uh, 3.2 tonnes there on the left, 3.4 tonnes there on the right. We want 6.6 .6 for the flight. So that does concur there with the flight plan. The lift dumpers, those are currently indicating in. Disarmed, the lever is stowed. TTC switches, just moving the throttles there briefly, are set to take off. Speed brake, again stowed, flaps, flap handle is stowed, indicating flaps up. Cross feed switch is selected off, we'll test the boost pumps individually. So left forward is good, lights are out. And same there on the left aft. Same there on the right forward. And on the right aft. So boost pumps check, transfer pump. Just checking those. We should see the lights illuminate. We've got no fuel there in the centre tank. Next right, Victor, 11, four, two, Mike. So transfer pumps are checked. For the light switches for the time being, just the nav lights selected on. Communications and avionics. Com radios are set. No need for the ADFs or the HF radio. Just set the transponder through to standby, squawk mode Charlie, and we'll leave ourselves squawking 2000. On the autopilot, we have both the roll and the pitch channel selected in. We'll leave the autopilot master and the yaw damper off for the time being. The hydraulic flight control panel, all switches are selected on, expecting to see all of those lights currently illuminated. Flight control lock is selected on. The alternate gear handle is selected up. And on the right-hand instrument panel, once again, the flight instruments have been checked. The static pressure and PJ selector are both guarded. Door warning lights, just the forward passenger exit currently illuminated. We've yet to board the passengers, so that makes sense. The landing gear warning switch is currently guarded. Same as well for the compass, that's set to slave and guarded. And finally, on the right-hand side here of the panel, we'll have the first officer run through his central warning and caution system test. You can also check the cabin ventilation shuttle valve is set through to normal. 
And we can also have him set up the flight recorder here ahead of the start. Once airborne, climbing to cruise 35,000 feet. Flying time, we're looking at around 1 hour 15 minutes. Flying conditions are quite pleasant. During the flight, we're chatting to you, giving an update of our arrival time, the latest weather as we receive it, and a little bit of flight information. If you'd like to make yourselves comfortable, hand you over to the cabin staff. They will be doing a flight safety demonstration. I would ask that you pay attention while that is in progress. It is for the benefit and the safety of all of us on board. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, I do hope you enjoy the flight and bear with us uh, while we sort out this minor delay. Thank you. Okay, so we now have everybody on board the jet. We've just closed up the forward passenger exit. Just before we commence the push and start, we'll run through a quick departure brief. So as we've already covered to some degree, we're going to be flying the Trent to November departure off runway 27. This plate 10-3 Delta, it's a conventional SID. Initially that's based off the East Mid ILS DME, or track 1 mile runway heading, then making a right turn onto a track of 298. We need to be above 3,000 feet, 12 miles from the Trent VOR. And we'll make a right turn to pick up the 340 radial inbound towards Trent, maintaining 6,000 feet until we're four miles from Trent itself. So covering that again, we have 298 there, selected, pre-selected for the turn. We'll just fly runway heading initially. That's pre-selected on the heading bug. We have the course of 340 set on both NAV1 and NAV2. We've got the Trent VOR set there on NAV1 and the East Mids ILS set on NAV2 for the DME. In terms of the terrain, no significant there. 2,700 feet for the MSA. In terms of the weather, obviously a pretty miserable day as we've already discussed. So anticipating we'll need the wipers on, probably for the taxi and the takeoff as well. 16 degrees outside at the moment, so no need for any engine anti-ice, at least during the initial stages of the climb. Just covering the taxi briefly here as well. We're on the central apron, as discussed we're on stand 7, so we're going to be pushing back onto Romeo. We'll taxi out via Romeo, turning right onto Alpha, which is the taxiway that the Jet 2 is just joining onto now. And we'll take Alpha all the way down to the end. It's going to be a full length departure off runway 27. With that in mind then, running through the before start checks, we'll take the anti-collision lights on. The rudder pedals, seats and harnesses are adjusted and secured. The electrical power and bleed air supply is set. Brake pressure is checked. Parking brake is selected on. The fuel quantities, once again, 3.2 there on the left, 3.4 on the right, so 6.6 .6 in total, confirmed against the flight plan. Pressurization is set. The thrust index, we have 170 both there on the left and on the right. Nav aids are set. The ship's papers are on board. For the takeoff data, we're using a 32 tonne takeoff data card. You can see we're now showing 31.9 tonnes for the aircraft weight. It's going to be a flap 6 takeoff, so we have V1 VR of 138, V2 of 145, and a flap retraction at 151 knots. We have the speed bugs set there on the airspeed indicator. Ground locks are removed, windows and doors are closed, and we are now cleared for the push and the start. So the tug here can move into position, we'll take the part brake off ahead of time. Once again the anti-collision light switches are selected on, throttle levers are both closed. Same for the HP fuel valve levers. Boost pump switches are selected on, start master is selected on. We'll be starting the number two engine first. We do have the start valve light illuminated. So monitoring the number two here as it runs up, we're looking for 15 to 20 percent HP RPM, just coming up through 10 percent at the moment. There's 15. We'll just wait till we're through 20. Just commencing the push. There's 20 percent. We'll move the HP fuel lever into the start position. We do have a rise in TGT. We're waiting till we see 400 degrees or 50 percent on the HP RPM. And then we can move the HP fuel lever into the run position. Tap 25 to the air, clear take off, 210 degrees. One. There's 350 degrees. And there's 400. The so HP fuel lever into the open position. 
Just keeping an eye here as well on the push. Again, exiting via Romeo, which we're just coming up a beam now. So, good start there on the number two. We'll do the same for the number one. We do have the start valve light illuminated. Continuing in the pushback for the time being. There's 10% on the HP RPM. Up through 15. And just coming up on 20, so HP fuel lever through to the start position. Looks like we're good now in terms of the push. We'll have the tug here disconnect. Part brake can go on. And again, monitoring the engine as it runs up. We do have a good light off. Touchstone 4 zone right, VK next right, into the apron of Victor, parking standing. There's 400 degrees. HP fuel valve, route to the open position. And it looks like we have two good starts. The engine temperatures and pressures are checked. The after start checks, the central warning and caution system lights are all extinguished. HP fuel valve levers are set open. The fuel pressure lights are out. Ignite lights are both out. Start valve light is out. The start master can go off. Generator lights, we do have both generators there selected on. Just check the generator outputs. There's Gen 2. So generators all looking good. We'll take the Gen 3 switch off. We'll just take the APU lead air off there as well. And taking generator 3 there off the bus, the APU master can go off. Air conditioning main switches are both selected on. AC and DC has been checked. Engine anti-ice can go through to auto. Windshield heating switches are set to low. Veto and vane heating switches are both selected on. Hydraulic supplies are checked. The electric pump switches are both off and guarded. Flight control lights are out. And the flaps, once again, it's going to be a flap 6 takeoff. So we have flap 6 selected. And flap 6 indicated. The taxi checks, the flight instruments are set. Trim, we have 5 units nose up. That's as per the load sheet. Anti-collision lights are selected on. Collector tanks. Both indications currently out, so we do have a decent supply there to the collector tanks. Flaps. Six set and indicated. Crew briefing is complete. We'll take the taxi light on. And the park brake can come off. All clear on the right. Again, a really nasty day out there at the moment. Quite a lot of rain moving through. We'll take the wipers through to low. They don't do all that much on the F-28. And just coming up on the throttles here. So left turn here onto Romeo. And then it'll be a right turn to join Alpha. That's almost straight ahead of us currently. Just take the turn nice and slow, make sure there's nothing else coming down Alpha. VD639 clear takeoff runway 27, 250 degrees, 16 runway down. Clear takeoff runway 27, 250 roger. Okay, so we are now lined up here on runway 27, running through our lineup checks. Brake temperatures are checked, the APU is selected off, lift dumpers are armed, we've checked the flight controls, your damper is selected in, the transponder is set through to on. Same there for the landing lights and for the weather radar as well. Part brake is selected off, We're just holding the aircraft on the tow brakes. And we'll come through to 50% on the LP RPMs. So the engine is stable, everything looking good. Off the brakes, we'll set takeoff thrust. 
We're looking for 100% on the thrust index gauges to confirm that takeoff power is set. And let's check power is set. Checked 80 knots. SV1 um, rotates, so back on the yoke, pitching for 10 degrees nose up initially. We do have a positive climb, take the gear up. We can disregard that GPWS warning, it's spurious. Seem to get quite a few of those on the just flight F28, I'm not really sure why. So gear is up, lights are out, maintaining runway heading for the time being. There's one DME, so commencing a right turn out towards the northwest. And we are above our minimum clean speed, the speed is checked. Just coming up on 1500 feet, so the flaps can come up. We'll start pitching the nose down, let the aircraft accelerate, now up towards 250 knots. There's our heading, we'll just hold off on setting climb thrust until we've got ourselves established here in the climb. Looking good there on the speeds. We've got 250 set there on the speed index. The aircraft is slowly accelerating. Not really a day for manual flying. Get the wipers off. And take the autopilot. We're coming to heading. We'll leave ourselves in pitch for now. And we'll just wait until we see 250 knots. And then we'll come into IS hold. TTC switches can go through to climb. And we'll just pitch the nose down further. We'll go for a vertical speed here of around a thousand feet per minute just to allow us to accelerate we're looking to be above 3,000 feet 12 miles from Trent so we're already good there in terms of that restriction we'll keep a good eye on the CDI bar as well we should start to see that come in momentarily and obviously we need to turn inbound towards the VOR so there's a thousand feet per minute Approaching 250 knots. And actually we'll just stay in pitch for the time being, we'll maintain a thousand feet per minute just to ensure we don't bust through our level. We want to maintain 6,000 feet till we're three, four miles from Trent. And just coming up from 250, so we'll start reducing the thrust, maintain the speed. That's 5,000, so 1,000 to go. We'll run through the after takeoff checks. So landing gear is up, lights are out, flaps are selected up, indicating up. Here comes the CDI bar, so we'll start the turn in just a moment. Easy 639, fly runway heading, climb altitude 4,000 feet, QNH 1002. So turning inbound now towards Trent. And 5,500 feet, speed looking good. The lift dumpers are in, RPMs and TGTs are checked. The TTC switch is set through to climb. Okay, fly runway heading, climb altitude 4,000 feet, 1002, easy 639. So tracking nicely now inbound towards Trent, showing 9 miles to run. At 4 miles we can continue the climb up towards flight level 240. Easy 639, correct, contact Manchester Control, 128.05. Okay, we've captured the height here at 6,000. And looking good on the heading, we'll stay in heading for now, we're pretty close in towards the station, there's no point coming into beam. 
We'll stay in heading until we're tracking outbound from Trent. And a reasonable distance from the VOR. We'll take the landing lights, the flare lights and the rollout lights off. And 7 miles to run. After Trent, we're going to be coming on to a course of 293 outbound from the station. We'll keep a good eye on that. We'll pre-select that ahead of time. It's 293, showing 5 miles to run. And just coming up on 4 miles so we can continue the climb in just a moment. There's 4 miles. So flight level 240. We have flight level 240 pre-selected, we'll come back into IS holds and we can start increasing again up towards climb thrust, you can see the aircraft going back into a climb Climb power is set, just about to come overhead the station Just come back into pitch here briefly, just to get our speed back towards 250 knots. And overhead Trent, so turning now outbound 293. Okay, we're showing ice detection, we'll deal with that in just a moment. That's 8,000 feet, we are through transition now, so we'll go 1013 on the altimeters We've got 1013 there on the left, same there on the right and speed coming back towards 250 knots just slightly right there on the heading get us back on our course, 3 miles out now from Trent so ice detected, we do have the engine anti-ice set in the auto position you can see we have an ice detection light and you can see there the system automatically taking care of things. We've got bleed air supplied, the engine anti-icing. So a really nice system there on the F-28. There's 250 knots again. We'll come back into IS hold. Just a couple more items here for the after takeoff checks. The engine anti-icing is once again set through to auto. Pressurization. Again, we have flight level 250 pre-selected. Cabin altitude there, just above 2,000 feet. Delta PSI about 3.5. The cabin altitude vertical speed is increasing. Fasten seatbelt signs, we'll leave those on just a little bit longer, we're obviously still passing through some weather. No smoking signs can go off. It does look like we're through the worst of the weather now, so we'll just cycle the signs. Let the cabin crew start working, again it's a pretty short sector. Up through 10,000 feet, so back into pitch. We'll get the nose down, we can start accelerating now up towards 280 knots. And the CDI bar there just starting to come in again now as we track outbound from Trent. After Trent we're going to be tracking towards Wallasey which is on the frequency of 114.1. We'll tune that up on NAV2. One thousand feet per minute on the vertical speed. You can see that speed index just starting to come in. Once it's dead centre again, we'll go into IS hold. Get there on the speed. IS hold. Still showing ice detection. Obviously, clear of any weather for the time being. Doesn't look like there's going to be too much in that layer above us, but we'll just leave the seatbelt signs on until we're above it. And just coming onto the CDI once we're centred up there we can go into beam and have the aircraft fly the CDI for us automatically so we've still got Trent on nav 1 policy on nav 2 293 outbound from Trent and showing about 40 miles to run towards Wallasey just coming onto that CDI bar 
So we're coming to beam. Showing beam now on the FMA in terms of the autopilot modes. We're coming to VOR loc there on the flight director as well. And we can center up the heading bug to give us our current heading. Up through flight level 150. Only about 1.3 tons per hour on each engine currently here in the climb. Okay, left all the way back to land board. So leave on heading at 270, speed 210, so we're and that's about us for the time being, obviously just passing through these two layers of cloud. As I say, we'll leave the seatbelt signs on until we get above this secondary layer. Once we're above the clouds, we can release the passengers. It's going to be a pretty short cruise over towards Belfast. We've got about 20 minutes in the cruise overall. Top of descent we've calculated, we need about 72 miles down from flight level 240. That's going to be about 10 miles outside of the Isle of Man VOR. In the meantime, we'll head outside take the time to appreciate what I think is an excellent new addition to the Fokker with this British Midland livery. And as usual, we'll come back just before top of descent, we'll set the aircraft up, we'll brief the arrival, and make our way in towards Belfast. London, uh, good afternoon, AZ6441, you find level 390 to Goodwood. AZ6441, London, good afternoon, reject to sit at. Bring to sit at, 6441. Midland 8865 London, good afternoon. Climb level 330. Climb level 330, Midland 8865, Cruise, please. Roger. Cargo 410, route direct to Dover. Jet set 304, Charlie, turn left heading 170 degrees. And speed flight level 350, level at the Tetet, please. We're left at any one seven degrees and we will be level three five zero by Tetet, Jet Set three zero four nine. Twist three five four, flight level three four zero. Twist three five four, London, Roger. Twist three five four, report your position. Our position is 50 miles south of Alizo. Twist three five four, you've come to the wrong frequency, contact London 128 decimal four two. Bye bye. Good day, London United. 915, flight level 280 for flight level 300. Okay, so welcome back to the flight deck of the F 28. As you can see, nice here above the cloud tops. We had a pretty short cruise over towards Belfast, only about 15 minutes between top of climb and top of descent. We are just approaching our top of descent point. 10 miles to run towards the Isle of Man, 72 miles to run towards Belfast, or at least the Belfast VOR. So we'll descend down initially to 10,000 feet. That will allow us to slow up for 250 knots below 10. So we have 10,000 set. We'll come into IES hold again. And start coming back off the throttles. We want about 2,000 feet per minute rate of descent here to keep us on profile. Still in heading at the moment, we'll leave the autopilot in heading. We're coming overhead, the Isle of Man. And just continuing to reduce the power. Once we're happily established here in the descent, we'll run through the descent checklist. So six miles to run. We actually want to track outbound 307 as well towards Belfast. Descent rate is looking good now. So for the descent checks, the fast seatbelt signs can go on. Pressurization is set. We've got a uh, cabin target altitude now of zero. Belfast, of course, down at sea level. And you can see there as well, the cabin altitude is reducing. The TTC switches have been set through to take off once again. For the landing data, we've got a landing data card of 31 tonnes. The aircraft currently showing 30.5 tonnes. We've set the speed bugs already. 
is going to be a flaps 42 landing. That's giving us a V-ref of 126. So it'll be 131 for the V-approach. For the briefing, we are just coming overhead the Isle of Man. So continuing outbound on 307. 60 miles now to run towards Belfast, so we may as well tune up the Belfast VOR here as well on Nav 1. It's on a frequency of 117.2. And we have 1172 showing 60 miles to run. So we'll stay in beam for the time being since we're bang on our CDI currently. In terms of the arrival then, we've just come over the Isle of Man. We're going to be tracking inbound towards waypoint Ringer. Ringer is 28 miles out from the Belfast VOR, so 28 miles we'll be vectoring ourselves around for the ILS onto runway 25. So initially the arrival plate 10-2. That's going to take us on to the ILS DME for runway 25. Just keeping an eye here on our profile. That's plate 11-2. It is the ILS DME runway 25 at Belfast. Frequency there is 109.9. The identifier is India Alpha Golf. We'll tune that up on Nav 2 ahead of time and also as a bit of a memory aid for later on. So 109.9, final approach course is 247. Again, we can set that here ahead of time. And 24 Echo, good day, turn right heading 070. There's 247. Right heading uh, 070, camera 25. The decision height is 200 feet on the rad out, and we've got 200 feet pre selected there for the Cat 1 RLS. Aerodrome elevation is 268 feet. If we need to make a missed approach, it's a continuous climb up to 3,000. Initially straight ahead to 2,500 feet and then a right turn back towards the VOR to take up the hold at 3,000 feet. The transition level is by air traffic, so we'll try and get that done as we come through 10,000 feet. And the terrain, nothing too significant there. You can see we've got some terrain out to the east of the field up to around 1,800 feet. MSA 3,500 feet, we'll use that for the approach. And joining on to the RLS, we can come down to 2,500. Otherwise, it's not dissimilar to what we saw out of East Midlands. It is a little bit nicer in Belfast. Cloud coverage is much the same. The temperature is 10 degrees. QNH is 1009. Not as much rain in the area, according to the forecast. There might still be a little bit of drizzle around. We're planning to land, as discussed, on runway 25. So we'll just wait for the chart there. We'll be vacating off to the right, most likely onto Charlie, and then taking ourselves back in towards the main terminal. In terms of the landing, it's manual braking, manual speed brake as well. The lift dumpers are automatic. Again, it's going to be a conflict full landing and no reverse thrust on the F-28. We'll just come back onto the ILS chart. In terms of our fuel state, Dublin is the alternate today. The weather's quite nice over there. We need 2.2 tonnes for Dublin. We're currently showing about 2.4 there on the left, about 2.6 on the right. About 5 tonnes overall, expecting to land with about 4.5. So we've got about an extra 2.3 up our sleeve, which is about right. I plan for an extra hour's worth of fuel. We've got 20 minutes of contingency plus an extra 30 minutes just to account for the weather. The forecast earlier on wasn't looking particularly great, but things have improved quite a bit now in Belfast. So plenty of fuel. Again, we've got multiple runway options as well, albeit 2.5 is preferable. Coming down through 15,000, that means we need 45 miles to run. Currently showing 42. We're not tracking direct to the station though. We're going to be vectoring ourselves off out towards the northwest, back around for runway 25. So that's the crew briefing complete. The descent checklist is complete. Once again, we are showing ice detected. And again, the system taking care of us. So down through the first cloud layer, we'll shortly be into the second cloud layer. We'll continue the descent for now down to 10,000. Just before we hit 10,000, we'll start to bring the speed back towards 250 knots. And waiting here on 28 DME from Belfast, overhead waypoint ringer, we'll vector ourselves up towards the northwest. Binary 3, Romeo Whiskey, contact Scottish, what's the way, decimal 055. Bye bye. 3055, Romeo 3, Romeo Whiskey, good day. Channel 2 for Echo is approaching in 9 is 0. Channel 2 for Echo, roger, climb flight level 120. Contact Dublin, 129 or decimal 18. Climb flight level 120, 
Okay, so we're just coming down through the second cloud layer. We're vectoring ourselves now towards the north on a heading of 350, showing about 19 miles to run towards the VOR. Just coming down through five and a half thousand feet, so looking good in terms of profile. Speed back now at 180 knots. Now we're taking flaps 11 here as well for the config, just to give ourselves a little bit of extra drag. Turning down to 3,000 feet. We'll run through the approach checks. So the no smoking signs can go on. Altimeters. We have QNH of 1009 set on both the left and the right. Anti-icing is checked. Landing light switches are selected on and extended. That is the approach checklist complete. So we'll just continue on the heading for now. Using the RMI here as a bit of a reference, so currently showing that we're on a uh, course of about uh, 260 out from the field. It's 247 inbound for the RLS. And just coming up on 4,500, so we're getting a little bit low now. We can start to come up on the power again, reduce that rate of descent. We'll just leave the VOR up for now on NAV1. It's quite a useful NAV-A to have. Obviously that's giving us our RMI bearing to the field. In fact, what we can do here is we'll switch over between NAV1 and NAV2. So 1172 on the right. Good afternoon, line up on the And 1099 here on the left. Line up to the left, And now that way we've got the RLS ready to go. And we've still got the RMI here giving us the distance and the course towards Belfast. We can start turning back inbound towards the field now, so we'll come on to a heading of 3... 2 zero initially. It's 1,000 to go. Vertical speed is minus 500 feet per minute. And we can inset the RLS from 2,500 feet. Currently down at 3,000 just to keep us above the MSA. Not, Happy with where we are at the moment. Course now is two four five. So very shortly we'll be coming on to the RLS. We'll continue the turn. There's three hundred on the heading. Now we'll just wait for the CDI bar to come in now and then we'll go back into beam, have the aircraft track us inbound towards the RLS. Keeping an eye here as well on the glide slope, once we see that come in we'll go into glide. And just maintaining flaps 11 for the time being. So 80 miles to run, 3000 feet, we're definitely a little bit low. Did play things fairly conservatively here, not being all that current on the F-28. So there's the CDI coming in. We'll set the heading bug back round onto our course. And just coming up again on the thrust, just trying to shallow off this descent rate as much as possible. Save us levelling off. Now that we're established on the low, happy that we can come down to 2500 feet. So we'll just keep a nice shallow descent here until we set that glide slope. We're a thousand to go, coming into a little bit of rain again. We are visual with the ground though, so we should be okay in terms of coming visual before the landing. We'll maintain 180 knots until 7 miles. Just coming through 15 miles and about another 600 feet here in the descent. 2500. Let's check 2500 on the rad out. Does look like there's a little bit of weather between us and the field. So we are established on the LOC. We have that both on the autopilot and the flight director set currently. We'll leave the flight director as is for now. Now we'll just centre out that heading bug again. That's 162, good day, climb flight level 120. There's 3000. Really we want to be at 10 miles at 3,000 feet, currently at 14. 
as discussed, so with that shallow descent rate, we should get ourselves back onto profile. And just keeping an eye here on the DME for the configuration. We'll keep the flaps as is for now, no point taking any extra drag since we're a little bit high. 262, turn left, right to pass it. Again, there are some bands of rain between us and Belfast, so just hoping that we pass through those before we reach the field. Otherwise, they're going to impede our visibility a little bit. There's 2,800 feet. And again, just coming up slightly on the throttles, we'll go with a descent rate of just around 100, 200 feet per minute. We are slowly edging back towards profile, speed still looking good. We'll get the landing checklist ready here as well. Press 162, contact Dublin. 135, that's Mold 6, 55, Mold of There's 11 miles, nicely on the loke. 35, 655, that's one. Yeah. We've actually levelled off here, so just coming again slightly back off the power. Close slope coming in, so we'll arm that up. And for the missed approach, we're looking at 3,000 feet. So we should see glide slope capture momentarily. Coming up on the power levers again to maintain 180 for now. There's a glide. And we do have glide slope capture, 3,000 foot set for the missed approach. We should see the aircraft commence a descent, coming back off the power in anticipation of that. Eight miles, we'll take the gear down. We can arm up the lift dumpers. And start bringing that speed back towards 160 knots. We'll just set the approach straight off the bat, it's a little bit easier, so 131. And we'll just keep an eye on the the speed, 160 is what we're looking for initially. So we have gear down, three greens, we'll go through to flaps 18. Looking good there on the glide, we are now visual as well with the approach lights. Flaps 25. Speed is checked. We have flaps 25 selected. And again, back up on the power levers now as the speed bleeds off to maintain the approach. So, five miles to run. It is going to be a flaps 42 landing, so we'll take the flaps all the way through. That's going to be quite a bit of drag, so again, coming back up on the throttles. So, we have gear down, three greens, flaps just continuing to roll out. Now we do have full flaps. So for the landing checks, the landing gear is down three greens. Brakes are checked. Lift dumpers are armed. Flaps set. So that is the landing checks complete. That's checked 1000. We are stable. And there's runway 25. Looking good at the moment. Two reds, two whites are on the pappy. The weather pretty much exactly as we were expecting. Certainly not particularly spectacular, but nevertheless a bit nicer than we saw in East Midlands. I'm flight level one two zero, one two zero. And speed just coming onto the approach. Six zero golf turn right direction to the left. It's a direct to the left. One two zero. Showing three point four miles to run. And as discussed, we're going to be touching down, manual braking, auto lift dumpers. We'll take the Speed brake just as we come over the threshold. Looking to vacate off to the right. Your wind turbines there off on the left. Okay, so we'll take out the autopilot. Let's check to 500. Okay, speak around here. And again, speed looks good. Just drifting slightly out to the right of the centre line, correcting for that. 
Looking good on the glide and on the Pappy, showing just a touch low now on the Pappy. Glide's still looking good, those never seem to quite match up in the sim. That's checked. Okay, we'll continue. Slightly low again on the Pappy, but happy visually with where we are on the profile. Okay, over the threshold. We'll take the air brake. Just starting the flare. There's touchdown. And onto the brakes. Again, no reverses. The lift dumpers have deployed. And we'll come fairly aggressively onto the brakes here to vacate off to the right. Okay, so just vacating runway 25. Looks to be very busy here at Belfast. Not sure there's even a spare stand around. We'll take it nice and slow. We'll head around the back, see if we can't find a spare stand. We can bring in the flaps. We'll take the landing lights off. Taxi light can go on. And we'll get rid of the strobes here as well. So for the afterland checks, we'll start up the APU. Coming back up to the overhead, the APU master can go on. Generator 3 and the air supply selected off. We'll hit start. Make our way in towards the left here. Hopefully we'll find a stand somewhere around the back. So APU is starting, speed brake is in, lift dumpers are in, flaps are selected up, indicating up, weather radar is off. Yeah, just keeping a good eye out here, I think there's a stand just off to the right there of the EasyJet. Engine anti-ice is selected off, same there for the Pito and the Vane heating. And we do have a stand just here on the left. Get the taxi light off. And we'll just hold the rest of the afterline checks here. Obviously, we got a little bit busy here as we come on to stand. 6487, Victor, low, descent flight So it looks like it stands 13 for us today. We've actually not seen a, an airport this busy in quite a while in the sim. So gently onto the brakes. Part brake is set and continuing on with that afterline checklist. Airfall anti ice is off, engine anti ice is off, Peter and Vane heating is off. Windshield heat will leave on low for now. Generator 3 switch. Let's check the output here of the APU generator. So the APU is available, we'll take Gen 3 on. We'll take the bleed air on there as well. Generator output looks good. Weather radar is off, transponder. 
is set through to standby. Your damping is selected off. Flight control lock is selected on. And for the parking checks, parking brake once again is set. HP fuel levers. Got a good shutdown there on the number one. And same there on the number two. Fasten seatbelt sign is off. Air conditioning main switches. Take the right side of the system off. We'll leave the left side on for now. Generators one and four are both on. We'll leave those as is for now. Thrust levers are closed. Fuel is selected off. Boost pump switches. Mark one anchor, I'm gonna load in. Five turn left link one six zero. Are off. Hang lights and flare rollout lights are off. Anti collision lights are selected off. Nav lights will leave on. And that is the shutdown checklist complete. You're in Belfast. So there you go, guys. I do hope you enjoyed another outing in the Just Flight F28 Professional. Once again, the jet, with its lack of automation, its fairly antiquated systems, has very quickly become a firm favourite of mine within the sim. This sort of flight and both of the wonderful Pyreek sceneries really adding to the experience. And hopefully as well some of you will enjoy the retro Midland livery, which as usual I'll leave available over on flightsim.to. I'll leave a link down in the video description below. And once again a very big thank you to James P. Jam for all of his hard work on the aircraft. If you enjoyed our flight today then please do consider giving the video a like. If you want to see more content from the channel and you've yet to do so then please do consider subscribing as well. And lastly, if you'd like to help support the channel further and earn yourself a few extra benefits along the way, you can do so by becoming a channel member or patron. On that note, as always, a huge thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. I do hope that all of you are having a great day wherever you are. Take really good care and I will see you all again soon.